And thank you all of you for being here today. And, and thank you for your important work because really what I see you as doing as keeping that collective memory alive and educating generation after generation so that we don't forget. And I think that's something we all need to keep in our hearts and in our minds is literally this is how we remember collectively what's happened in our history. So uh, I have tons of questions and not enough time, but I guess uh, the first question that I have is, is around technology and how do we retell the story to the younger generation that's coming and what is the work that you're doing around that? Um, I'm going to start with you, uh, Madame Dramogay. Um, you talked about in your presentation the 500 oral histories that have been recorded to date. And I'm just really curious about how you're sharing those stories. And I would love if you could tell us if there's any women or how many women in, involved in that, that would be helpful. So if I could just leave it at you at that. Sure, thank you very much for that question. And it is something that we, um, uh, that is very top of mind for us. It's, it's reaching, reaching those, those younger audiences. And of course, via the platforms that are more relevant and I, I, I suppose accessible to them. And so uh, many of our um, uh, uh, programs, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, answering Mr. Amos's questions, our educational programs have been uh, adapted to a technical uh, platform. And this is not only by necessity of what, what is going on, but also hearing back from educators. So we, we adapt what we do, um, not because we think it's, it's uh, what's working, but it's because we uh, have great relationships with Canada. And, and other stakeholders who actually give us that very important feedback. And so um, one example from a school program very quickly um, is we are able to offer um, access to, to some of our experts, our expert educators to connect virtually to the classroom uh, wherever they may be and uh, invite veterans sometimes also to, to, to give their own uh, lived history. It's a very, very popular program in situ but it's growing in popularity uh, on, online, as you can imagine. And uh, to, to your second point about the oral history, uh, this is a project which is somewhat in, it, it, in its infancy, where through, uh, throughout our, our, our recent history, the, so the last 20 years, I would say, we have accumulated these oral histories as we have co uh, collected many, many other things. And uh, we're very, um, very happy to have received a, a very generous donation just around uh, Christmas time that will allow us to actually create a platform. And um, if I can use the working title for this platform, it will be in their voices. So what it is, is going to be this digital platform where uh, we will um, migrate, if you will, uh, these, uh, on, these um, uh, excuse me, these oral histories, but grow the program. And in growing that program, of course, we are very um, concerned and aware of, of the need for that diversity and that, those various voices. And it won't only be from veterans, but also the experiences of their families, which we, we think is part of that bigger story of commemoration. Because as we know, the experiences of our veterans has affected also the, the experiences of their family, which is a story that is very, very important uh, to tell. Thank you. 